Welcome to Beyond the Trailer's coverage of the 2016 Academy Awards, giving you an in-depth look at the top categories. Today, Best Director, where despite surprisingly strong contenders across the board, Alejandro Inaretu seems poised to join that rare club of individuals who have won back-to-back -back Oscars. Do you think Alejandro is as done a deal as Leo? Be sure to vote and be on the trailer's annual Oscar poll. The link is in the video description. And right now, let's take a look at who could possibly upset an Alejandro win. Lenny Abramson, Room. One of the nicest things about the Best Director category this year is that it isn't full of the usual choices. Usually, it's sure it would be nice if Room's Lenny Abramson would get nominated, but he doesn't have the pedigree. He doesn't have the connections. He isn't the sort of director to get nominated. Except this year, he totally did. Yes, instead of Sir Ridley Scott and Todd Haynes, and even over a diversity nomination for Ryan Coogler, here's Irish director Abramson, whose few films to date have never been recognized by the Academy, the Golden Globes, BAFTA, or even the Indie Gotham or Spirit Awards. As for mainstream moviegoers, Abramson has barely registered, with Frank, sort of starring Michael Fassbender, and for putting Jack Raynor on Hollywood's radar. Ah, so that's why Raynor is on every casting director's shortlists, because up until now, it's been a bit of a mystery. But at the end of the day, there's no mystery as to why Abramson made the cut this year. The Academy just loves Room that much. So while Brie Larson is almost guaranteed to win Best Actress, such adoration could lead to another upset, maybe even here. And even if Abramson doesn't win, you can bet he's squarely on Hollywood's radar now, reunited with Jack Raynor. Alejandro Inaritu, The Revenant. Wow, the last two years have been a meteoric rise for Mexico's Inaritu. He first broke into Hollywood as a typical foreign director, the type actors go to for artistic credibility in between blockbusters, making films lauded by critics but seen by few. And on that note, Inaritu has made many trips to the Oscars, but always as filler. In other words, his films had no chance of winning any major awards, but occasionally took home a craft award or two. But then, Birdman came along, where Inaritu suddenly seemed to click, not just as an artist, but as a businessman. First off, Birdman tapped into Hollywood's growing frustration with the rise of the superhero movie. All the fall awards releases tank at the box office, but Deadpool breaks box office records? Then second, Inaritu discovered the power of stunt filmmaking. Done all in what seemed like one long take, Birdman went on to win Best Picture, Best Director, Best Screenplay, and Best Cinematography. Then, with The Revenant, while his insistence of shooting with only natural light and real snow caused the production to become a costly nightmare, Inaritu spun those choices as an artist holding his ground, a narrative that's worked. Inaritu has won Best Director at the Golden Globes, the BAFTAs, and the Directors Guild of America. He didn't even sweep like that for Birdman. See, just like George Miller, this year Richard Linklater made the mistake of not playing up his own stunt filmmaking. The squeaky wheel gets the Oscar. Tom McCarthy, Spotlight. Now, you might think that Tom McCarthy is another surprise nominee, but he actually has excellent awards street cred. The station agent, the visitor, win-win, the cobbler. Oh wait, how'd that last one get in there? See, luckily for McCarthy, Spotlight was such a labor of love, which he also co-wrote, that the Academy was willing to overlook one paycheck gig that, thankfully, nobody saw. McCarthy is also a TV and sometimes movie actor, and Academy voters do love a multi-hyphenate. Just ask the current king of multi-hyphenates, George Clooney. Plus, the great thing about being a multi-hyphenate is that it increases your chances of getting an Oscar. See, while there's pretty much no chance he'll win Best Director and won't get an Oscar for Best Picture since he isn't a producer on Spotlight, McCarthy is the frontrunner for Best Original Screenplay, having already won the BAFTA and the WGA Award. Adam McKay, The Big Short. This is the other surprise nominee, Will Ferrell's creative partner since way back in the day on SNL. Yes, the director of Farrell's biggest hits is now an Oscar nominee. 
which might mean he and Farrell have grown apart. It's tough to say as McKay doesn't have his next directing gig set up yet. That big dreamer and his management team are obviously holding out hope for an inner or two upset. Now that's funny. Then again though, McKay could find himself laughing all the way up to the Oscar stage. See, The Big Short isn't a frontrunner in any of the major categories, with only a slim chance it could take Best Picture. Both Spotlight and The Revenant have stronger claims to that title right now. So the ever-democratic Academy could feel Leo's best actor win takes care of The Revenant and look to give some gold to The Big Short right here. But even if McKay doesn't win, which again, he likely won't, to be an Oscar-nominated director is going to take his career to a whole new level. It would be nice if he could take Farrell with him, but just remember what happened when Nick Pazzolato cast pal Vince Vaughn in True Detective Season 2. I suspect Paul Rudd's cell will ring before Farrell's. George Miller, Mad Max Fury Road. To fanboys, Christopher Nolan and Miller are cut from the same cloth, but not to the Academy. Nolan almost immediately graduated to blockbuster status after Memento, robbing him of some of the artistic street cred that's so important to the Academy. Thus, the likely reasoning behind his decision to direct a World War II pick as his next project, a la Steven Spielberg's Schindler's List, which finally got Spielberg some respect in Hollywood as an artist. But Miller's eclectic resume, seemingly devoid of concern for box office success, despite astounding box office success, has enchanted Academy voters with Lorenzo's Oil, Babe, and Happy Feet, the latter for which he actually won Best Animated Feature in 2007. So Academy voters, contemporaries of Miller, are likely impressed not just with Miller's experimentation, but also his ability to reinvent himself, keeping his career alive. But thriving? As fanboys have moved their allegiance to Star Wars and now Deadpool, and even The Revenant thanks to Leo, Miller's Mad Max Fury Road suddenly seems forgotten. And instead of excitedly talking about planned sequels like he was right after Mad Max Fury Road's release, suddenly he's saying he's too tired to revisit the material right now. Yes, fanboys and the industry casting his work aside seems to have broken Miller, and while a win here or for Best Picture could maybe make him rise like the Phoenix, neither is likely to happen. And those are the 2016 nominees for Best Director. Be sure to leave your comments down below as well as vote in Beyond the Trailer's annual Oscar poll via the link in the video description. I'm Grace Randolph and I hope you'll check out the rest of BTT's Oscar coverage right now.